Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shen Plays. Welcome back to the next Factorial Beginner's Guide with myself and Mr. Avak. How's it going, Avak? Hello, everyone. It is going fairly well, honestly. Can't complain. Ooh, well, you could, hear. but there's not much point. <laughs> so, between episodes there, we have upgraded our base a little bit. We've moved over to armor-piercing round production instead of instead of the base ammo production. So we've removed the regular yellow ammo production up there in the north, and we put this uh, better ammo production in the south. And the reason you do this yeah. is because once you've researched armor producing rounds and you can start producing them in mass like this, there really is no need to keep the yellow rounds around. So you don't need to keep no. producing them. No. The only reason you might want to keep the yellow round is initially it's, it's fairly steel um, intensive. It does use a lot of steel to set this up. For the red ones. But yeah, for the red ones, because it, its components is copper and steel, which and, and steel is several plates of iron. But once you've got a reasonable amount of smelting going on, it's better in every measurable way. There's no downside to using it other than its higher resource cost. Yep. So other things we've done between episodes, if we've moved the western wall, we moved it maybe about 40 tiles to the west because we plan on yep. expanding our base in that direction. And as your base grows, you're going to have to move walls specifically, but you may also need to move some of the components of your base around. Like eventually yeah. we're going to have to make room to, to get some oil production going. We're going to have to move some more other production out of the way. In uh, fact, also, we moved our stone production down here out of the way. Correct. In order to expand our copper smelting mm -hmm. um, setup, because as Shen was about to mention there, once you're out of the very early game, initially copper isn't that big of a thing, but you mid and late game copper is a huge huge uh, important thing mostly because almost everything requires circuits and circuits require copper so you are going to you know copper isn't always going to be um this trifling concern it's never quite going to be used in the sort of quantities that iron is but you're going to want a good um copper smelting operation mm -hmm. And now that we've researched steel, we've also introduced steel furnaces in our entire production line. So this means we're going to be smelting things a lot faster. The steel smelters are twice as fast as iron smelters. And I can already see that we're, we this this line of smelting is so long that we're not even able to smelt. We're not even able to bring ore all the way down to the end of the line. Yeah. So we'll have, to, we'll have to upgrade this later on so that we get a little better production out of it. But for now, this is uh, pretty good. And what we've done if you have new smelters, like we have steel smelters now, they're called steel furnace, and you want to replace your old ones, you don't have to pick up your old smelter. You can just click no. on the new one and bring it over the old one, and it shows green, and click on it, and you just replace the old one. And it's really easy to do this. You can do the same thing with your factories as well. If you have a gray factory, and you want to upgrade it to a blue factory, you just click on your blue factory, you drag it over it, and you can plunk it down right like that. It's so easy. Worth noting that when you do this, the inventories of the original buildings are preserved. You may have noticed with the smelter up uh, when I replaced mine, I had a look. It already had five coal in it because the original smelter had five coal in it. Right. Down here, this probably already has, yeah, the max amount of red beakers in there because that was already in the uh, output Actually, did you replace that? You did, I did. I put the blue one yeah. down, then I put a gray one on top of it. All oh, right. Well, in that case, <laughs> it, the inventory was shifted around twice. But it's worth noting that that, that happens. Now, that actually brings me on to something, uh, a bit of a correction that was posted in the comments on the first couple of videos. I originally mentioned that if you try to pick up a chest and you don't have enough internal inventory in order to carry everything in the chest, that it would explode all over the floor. That is not the case anymore. Well, let me find a chest that is completely chock a block full of something. Uh, this one should do. This one. Uh, I shouldn't be able to pick this up. Yes, I can because I've got enough inventory. Ah, damn it, chest! Why, why are you showing me up like this? Well, okay, anyway, let me, uh, pop that back down. What he's saying is, it no longer explodes items all over the floor. This was behavior okay. that it, that was in an older version of Factorio. They've since fixed that, so no, it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Um, so what else have we done before we get into the meat? Well, today's episode is going to be covering building an outpost to gather resources yep. and then bring them back to your base. But before we get into that, there's a lot of things we need to do. And one of the things we have to do is do four specific technologies. Would you like to hit them up, Avak? Uh, yeah, certainly. Right, to get to trains. 
the nice thing about the technology system in Factory is you can work backwards to see the prerequisites of what you need. And we want railways specifically because railways give us access to the diesel locomotive and the curved rail. Now that's enough to get you started. Ultimately, you want more because you actually want to have cargo wagons and that sort of thing. But to start with, all you need is this. Now we need steel processing. We've already got that, it's in green. We also need logistics too and engines. Now logistics too, and engines are both yellow, it means that we can automatically get into those. So if we have a look at engines, this is going to give us the engine unit. And Logistics 2 is just a component of railway, but uh, we actually will need the electric engine, oh, sorry, the engine unit to build the diesel locomotive. So that's why that is a requirement. The third technology that we don't technically need, but realistically we want, is gates. Because having a gate is a fairly important thing if you're going to have a train moving back and forth regularly. You don't want just a giant gaping hole in your wall to allow the train to move through. With gates, you can lay the gates across the track and it's intelligent enough to drop the gate and raise the gate as the train's passing to avoid colliding with the train, but to keep fighters out of your base. So it, it helps to shore up any issues with your defense. Mm -hmm. Gates essentially function just as a regular wall does, but if the player or a train nears the gate, the gate will open and it yep. will close behind it. So if you want to walk through a wall, you don't have to pick up the wall and place it again behind you. You just walk through the gate and it'll close automatically. And it behaves yep. the same way as trains pass through. So we're gonna yep. go ahead and get started on this research here. I guess we'll start with logistics too. One not? last part of the technology we do want to cover. I did mention that it isn't necessary, but that's only true if you just want to use the train as a means for moving from A to B. If you want to set up an automated train to carry cargo back and forth for you, which we do, that that's like the, the most fun part of trains for me, is you are going to need automated rail transportation because that gives you the cargo wagon, yeah, but it gives you the train stop, which is most important of all. Ultimately, you need both for a fully automated system, but uh, train stops would also allow you to, to have a, a semi-automated just um, passenger train if you wanted, but that, only has a requisite of railway. So this is the ultimate one we want to get to. So it, it's uh, automated rail transportation. For that, we need railway. For railway, we need engines and logistics too. And yep. Shen is already working on logistics too. Logistics too. Uh, all these technologies are going to take some time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut and we'll come back when the tech is done and we'll mm -hmm. show you how to get started building the components you need for railway production. And then we'll okay. go we'll go kick some biters off of this iron that we want to grab in the east, and we'll start setting up an outpost over there. Ah, uh, glorious outposts. All right, we'll see you guys in a minute. Take care, everyone. We've changed a few things, not very much though. We'll cover that in a little bit, but mostly we have gotten all of the research done. I'm currently just researching bullet damage too, simply so that we keep research moving so we're not wasting time. But at this point, Shen and I are now ready to start creating automated manufacturing of the components that we're pretty much going to need a lot of throughout the whole campaign. So things like engines, you will use engines quite a lot. They're also a component for some later things as well, especially once you get into robotics engines, you will probably never be making enough. Cars, ever. tanks. Um, the cars and tanks and the train itself, we're not going to automate because you typically only build a few of those through an entire game, but you will build hundreds and thousands of engines. Uh, likewise, we'll build a lot of tracks because any rail um, two points, they, there's going to be a lot of track involved in any kind of rail setup. So that's also a useful thing. And well, there'll be a few other things, odds and sods here and there that we'll also cover. So Shen, what would you like to start on? I think we're going to start off with engines. So if we head to our crafting menu in the intermediate right, so products tab, we can see engines down here and requires steel plate, which we have on the belt system already, requires gears and pipes. And we've done gears before. They're simply iron plates manufactured into pipes or into gears and mm -hmm. pipes we haven't done before, but it's the exact same process, yeah. iron plates into pipes. So all we're going to need off of our main bus here is siphoning off some of this steel and bringing up some of this iron. Sounds easy enough? Yep. So why don't I split off some of the iron? Can you grab the steel for me? Uh, yep, certainly. So we have pipes, gears, all on the same belt. And then these engine factories are producing every, like I've said, every 20 seconds you get one engine. 
that's kind of slow. And if you're going to be using these in your factory, if they're going to feed into other parts of your factory, if they're going to make electric engines and robotics with these, you're going to need a lot of them being produced. So yeah, 20 seconds, just it's just a long recipe, that's all. I think for now we can put them in a box and it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. It's got all of this built out there. And I think I'm going to limit this box to, let's see, I think engines are stacks of 50, right? Uh, I believe so, Let's yeah. limit it to 100 engines for now. Let's not go nuts. How much do we need for a locomotive anyway? Uh, you will need 20 to check engines. the recipe, I'm afraid. 20 engines. And like Abex said, you're not going to use that many cars, that many tanks, or that many locomotives over the course of your entire game. Unless you go Not crazy. Unless, but, yeah. But yeah, if you, if unless you go, you're having a lot of fun. If you go crazy and make a huge base with lots of trains everywhere, then that's fantastic. But for the most part, this is something you can build in your pocket and it's not going to be a problem. So I think at this case, we are going to um, build a couple of these in our pocket and it shouldn't be a problem. Yep. In fact, we almost have enough engines for one locomotive right now. Great. Okay. So while that's building engines for us, Havak is going to get started on rail production. Rail production, right. Uh, these, now, this is one of the big things that requires stone. We've mentioned that, that not everything is going to require brick. You are going to need the raw stone for a few things, and rail track is probably one of the bigger ones. Also, um, anything that has a boiler, uh, or rather a... Um, are they actually boilers? No, stone furnace as a component. That's one of the other obvious places you're going to need stone just in its raw form. So you don't always want to turn everything into brick. <laughs> that is so goofy. It is goofy. For now, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> we could just have track delivering it, but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. You know what, Abak? Mm -hmm. I think we can make this a little better even. Look at this red right. arm down here. This red arm is working full time trying to put straight rails into a box. In other words, the factory is producing nice. straight rail faster than the arm can put it into a box. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. if we spread these out a little bit, we can make this a little nicer. So get rid of this pole. Get rid uh, of this. Get rid of this. <laughs> pretend nothing's happening. Abac. It's all fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put your I'm box totally pretending that. up here. And we're going to use a blue arm, because uh, yes, the blue arms good. are faster good than the red arms. And it's kind of, the, it's just the exact same thing that Avac was doing. But since the blue arms are faster than the red arms, we're able to put them in the box quicker. And that really was what was holding up right there, was just, it wasn't able to put them in the box fast enough. Yep, perfect. All right, just need some poles. No more other than that. Also, you need to answer your door. Yeah. <laughs> And there we go. All right, fantastic. Right, okay. All sorted. Okay, right, well, we've got the engines made. We've got the rail track being automated. I'm going to move down a little bit more defenses into this area. But while I'm doing that, Shen is going to work on one of the last little things that we had discussed that we were going to need to automate. And that is repair packs. Ah, right, right, right. Because I'm definitely starting to run low. They're very easy to make, but you're going to use them in enormous quantities. Okay, so repair packs are something you're going to want to have automated for sure. Early game, not super important. I mean, I I think I built 20 at the start of the game, and I've still got 14. And that's we've been repairing stuff all the time. Um, but later on, you're going to want repair packs to be automated because robots will be doing repairs for you. Yes. And you're going to have to feed the robots all the repair packs they need. So you're going to have to have it automated. Repair packs take, as a recipe, if we check our production tab here, they take electronics and gears. It's pretty much the same thing that goes into an inserter. So the exact same way we set up this inserter area, we're going to set up to produce repair packs. So I'll find a nice spot over here to funnel some iron and copper down. I guess I can do it over here. Don't be afraid to move things around in your factory. We've had to do it multiple Never times. You're going to have to do it multiple times in any factory you make. It's just part of having a factory. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. Some so people get... do challenge themselves to kind of build the perfect factory right from the beginning to have a plan in mind. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like following instructions at that point. And uh, it, there's definitely a charm to it. But certainly, I actually kind of like the kind of organic sprawl that occurs <laughs> if you just build things up. 
What he's saying is... I'm very is, much a fan of the oldie worldy cities. What example. he's saying is he likes his messy factories. Yes. That's what he's yes. saying. Ganic Sprawl. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> there should be a castle right in the middle, and then the villagers just kind of build up on the outside, and you just add little bits on here and there as you need it until you've got like this weird spider's web of little twisty turny alleyways. There's little tea shops. Twisty turny, eh? Yeah, twisty turny. Timey wimey too. All right, so how did we do this down here? We had copper on one side and iron on the other. That will work. Yeah, try not, try not to get too cramped in the spaces that you're building either. I do this all the time. I get so cramped up. And I make it a challenge to myself to just sort of make it work, even no matter how ridiculously cramped it is. But it's not always necessary, and it can make things very messy. Right, gloriously so messy is what he means Gloriously to messy? Oh, okay. <laughs> gloriously messy, apparently. Oh, we can see that our turrets are being engaged over here. So while Shen is just building up the infrastructure there, you've already seen him working on something very similar, like you said. It's pretty much exactly the same stuff that you need for inserters. I'm just going to go and start to repair this area. I'm also going to uh, swap out my old gun. I no longer need this one, these 100 regular magazines. They're just not necessary. But having a chest with a spare gun and a bunch of ammo in it, also some spare armor, that is really, really a good idea. Because you you may well die. You might not. And I don't generally recommend planning for failure. Oh my goodness. Avak, this is something that, I don't know how you didn't, didn't touch on this, but someone did mention it, and they're absolutely right. Um, if you die in a single-player game, it's game over. Oh yes, that's a very, The game just ends, and that's something that we don't really experience too often, because Avak and I, we usually play multiplayer games of Factorio. And in a multiplayer game, if you die, it's not so bad because nothing happens. Like I could shoot Avak right now, he would die, and you see a message on the screen, he has died, and he'll respawn in like 15 Avak seconds or something. Avak has things on him that he doesn't want to lose. Avak and is going somewhere else. So he'll just respawn in, in like 15 seconds, but that doesn't happen in single player mode. So just keep keep that in mind. We're, we, we went kamikaze against those alien bases because we've done it a hundred times, but if you're you know in a situation where you're losing too much health, just get out of there. Bail Go back out, to your yeah. turrets, stay safe. <laughs> single player is dangerous okay yeah. so i have my also, electronics regular saves very important oh yes definitely so i have my electronics next thing i need is gears not yeah. any problem let's get some gears over here in fact i'll split this off oh i know what to do oh watch this is gonna be glorious avak you're ready for glory yes oh he's ready for glory all right. always ready for glory. so we're gonna use a red grabber to pick up some iron then we're gonna put our gears on the same belt and this is, this is just being silly here. We're gonna put our gears on the same belt as the electronics. There we go. Okay, don't, and then- Don't be afraid. If you set up your factory and you do things like having um, two different things on the belt, some people will point out that there is a reduction in, in throughput as a result of that. And that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. um, by having gears on one side of the belt, you've not got gears on both sides of the belt, so obviously you're not moving as many gears along that belt as you could, and you could be maxing it out, and, and that is how you would build for further expansion. If you were going to be making a gigantic factory where you really just wanted to be, you know, not, not satisfied with 100 units made per minute, you want several thousand units made per minute, then having things on a split belt, very rarely the optimum um, strategy to use but if you're just playing for the sake of getting to the end of the game just experiencing the game and don't be afraid to make things a little bit messy to make things a little bit squirrely in fact in many ways i think a lot of people would agree that one of the uh one of the nicest videos that anyone has ever seen of factorio is the trailer where that, that factory is just a mess oh yeah it's just everything is chaos everywhere there's trains running through the middle of the factory that is literally just a death wish um but it's glorious to watch it happening and likewise on the actual menu of the game the factory that is on the splash screen that is that is a spaghetti factory everything is going everywhere there's there's, there's little rhyme or reason just every tiny little space that could occupy something that does something does whether it's neat and clean and tidy and high throughput or not. And if you like that, 
then then enjoy it. That's whatever makes the game fun for you is the right way to play. Yep. That's a really important thing to, to keep in mind is don't feel pressured to build a certain way just because you see other people do it and they tell you that's correct. Also, for the record, don't build the way that I do because it is flat out not correct. Yeah. And I will say that right now, but I enjoy it more. And that's why I do it. Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, you're playing a video game. Play it the way you enjoy it. Don't worry about other people. All right. It's so I have our repair pack set up, and this is certainly not the most efficient way to do it. I don't really care. They're going into a box right now, and I'm not going to put a limit on it because we'll need a lot of repair packs. <laughs> All right. So what's the next thing? Right, well, how many? We've got 318 curved and 850 straight. We've got a lot of train track at Are this Are you saying point. it's time to build a locomotive? I would say that we have now completed the infrastructure necessary for us to move on to actually uh, plotting out our first, our first track. Okay. But we... uh, should we perhaps do that in the next episode? Mm, if you want. Yeah, I think this would be a good wrapping up spot here. We've finished all of the infrastructure necessary, and Shen is just getting rid of some rocks which are Stupid immovable. Bowler. Yeah, you, the only way to get rid of them is just, literally just to destroy them. You can shoot trees, or you could just chop them down like a sane person, but, you know, <laughs> Shen, Shen needs to, to vent his rage. <laughs> but uh, in the next episode, we will actually be working on getting the train up and running and out to, to where it needs to go. And we've got everything ready. So, uh, yeah, we should be seeing the very first outpost. We'll probably spend the entire episode setting that outpost up as well. It's definitely a lot of fun to start expanding out because there are lots of different building concerns that you have to uh, keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I'm not sure if I think you probably touched on it. Before we head out, though, uh, mm -hmm. Avac is sourcing our rail line yes. production stone with a box. Mm -hmm. And this is something that may look a little weird. Like, why don't you just run a belt of stone over here since it's going to be put on a belt anyway? And the reason is we don't use much stone. And later in the game, you're going to be doing localized production via robots. And when you have that research done and that ability in your factory, you're going to be wanting chests all over the place for the robots to move things around to. The robots will eventually come over here, drop off whatever you want. In this case, we want stone. They would bring the stone here, drop it off here, then it would go onto the belt into the factory. So that's something you can do later on. So don't don't be too uh, intimidated by, you know, forcing yourself to run belts everywhere. It's not necessary. But with that, we are actually out of stone. So <laughs> <laughs> just as well that we've got so many rails those, already made because those, those are the fighters will learn to rue the day that they they uh, hoarded all of the stone on the map. Indeed. But that's going <laughs> to be it for us. If you'd like to take us out, Shen? Sure. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this little beginner's video on getting ready for rail, railways and trains. We'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good day.